Part of this video is sponsored by AG1. They say making truly great hummus with just a can of chickpeas is impossible. And in the past, I used to somewhat agree. After all, in one of my earlier videos, I had to travel 2000 miles only to find out that to get to the silky smooth texture truly great hummus is famous for, you have to start with dried chickpeas, soak them overnight, painstakingly peel them, plus pull a few more kitchen stunts to get to the real deal results. But I wouldn't be making this video if I hadn't made a very exciting discovery. A discovery that, in my opinion, makes 10 minute hummus with minimal clean up and starting with just a can of chickpeas very much possible well sort of let me explain the easiest way to show you what I mean is to once again take you to my legendary neighborhood homo spot here in Berlin called Big Basha. If I had only known about this place sooner, I may not have traveled 2000 miles for hummus before because these guys completely knock it out of the park. Their hummus is not just beautifully presented, it is also ultra smooth, as it should be, and served slightly cooled, which is actually quite important. But today, I'm actually not here for the hummus. I came for this. This dish, you guys, is called musabaha. And the simplest way to describe musabaha is probably deconstructed hummus. We still have chickpeas and tahini as the main ingredients, so it really hits a lot of the same flavor notes as hummus, and yet it's completely different. The main difference is clearly the texture. Musabaha actually means something like swimming in Arabic, which refers to lightly mashed and whole chickpeas swimming in a runny tahini sauce. It is also served warm, and I mean warm, not hot, and I have to say, I actually kind of prefer the textural contrast this offers in comparison to its much more famous smooth cousin. Overall, I see musabaha as a much more rustic but equally satisfying alternative to hummus, with the biggest difference for home cooks like us being that musabaha can be made in minutes rather than hours. In fact, it's so easy that you can even make not one, but two incredible sauces to turn musabaha into a real feast of flavors and textures and still be done in under half an hour. We'll get to all of that after a quick word from this video's sponsor, AG1. I want to introduce you guys to something that has become an essential part of my morning routine, and that's AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. It uses a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients to support your brain, gut, and immune system. Out of all the good things AG1 can do for you, I think the most noticeable one for me has been that it keeps my focus and energy levels more balanced throughout the day. Now, you're probably thinking, with all that goodness, there's no way it also tastes good. Am I right? Well... See you tomorrow, little buddy. It actually tastes very pleasant and refreshing. If you ask me, I can definitely recommend kickstarting your daily healthy habits by drinking AG1 in the morning. On an empty stomach, by the way, that's how it works best. So if you're interested in giving it a try, head to my link in the description below to get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Here's to taking a step towards better whole body health. Thank you, AG1, for sponsoring this video. So, how do I convince you that Musabaha is the new kid on the block ready to eat hummus's lunch? Well, let's start with our two sauces. Here we have an almost jammy caramelized onion harissa dip and also something that is probably best described as a Levantine-inspired riff on chimichurri. So, let me show you how to make those first. For the chimichurri, we begin with a shallot, which will dice finely and place in a small bowl. Next, we'll take a clove of garlic, chop it finely as well, adding it to the shallots. Sprinkle this mixture with some salt and the juice of half a lemon. Give everything a good mix and let it sit for a while. This will help to reduce some of the sharpness from the raw garlic and shallots. In the meantime, we'll work on our herbs. I like to use a combination of dill, flat leaf parsley and mint. Get rid of any woody stems and reserve only the leaves. Chop these finely, sprinkle with a touch of salt, then chop them some more. Transfer the herbs to a mixing bowl, add an olive oil and mix in the marinated shallots and garlic. What you're left with is a fresh and tangy sauce with a bold kick from the alliums. I like to call it habibichuri, you call it what you want. It's great on anything, by the way, not just hummus. But next we'll move on to our second sauce and we're gonna start with an onion which we're gonna peel and grate. 
Grating doesn't only save time, it also breaks down the onions quite a lot, which is exactly what we want if we're going for that almost jammy consistency. Heat up some olive oil in a saucepan, then add whole cumin seeds and fry them for around 30 seconds or so until they're fragrant and start to pop and dance around the pan. Stir in the grated onions, add a pinch of salt and cook this mixture down for just a few minutes until the onions are lightly browned. Next, we'll add in something for the kick, which is gonna be harissa. This Tunisian spiced chili paste is fantastic, but you can also use any other chili sauce like sriracha if you can't find it. Also, stir in a bit of smoked paprika. By now, your onions should be nice and very roasty, just shy of getting some char on them. This means it's time to add pureed tomatoes for some body, but remember to turn down the heat to avoid some vigorous splattering. Season the sauce with some sugar and red wine vinegar or any other vinegar of your choice. What you have now is a chunky caramelized onion harissa dip that you'll be more than happy to have on hand even when you're not eating sabaha. Speaking of which, let's get to our hero component. It really couldn't be any simpler because a can of pre-cooked chickpeas is the perfect basis for musabaha. Start by roasting a minced clove of garlic in some olive oil until it just begins to brown, then add the entire can of chickpeas, including the liquid. Some of you guys know that the water in a can of chickpeas goes by the name aquafaba and can be used in a whole variety of very unexpected recipes, most of them sweet somehow, like you can make chocolate cake and strawberry ice cream with chickpea water. Yes, that's a topic for another time, for sure. All I'm trying to say is don't discard it. Chickpea water actually has a lot of flavor and good things you might want in your cooking. If you have any really cool suggestions on what to do with aquafaba, please put that in the comments. I am very curious. But back to our recipe, you wanna add some ground cumin to lend an aromatic note to the chickpeas and let them simmer. Yes, I know I just said how great this chickpea liquid is, but we do have to control the amount of it, which is why we're reducing it by about half, and that's quite important. Plus, you're actually warming the chickpeas up at the same time, so two for one. In the meantime, add a tablespoon of tahini to a mixing bowl and the juice of half a lemon. Mix those two together until you see the tahini magic happen. Yes, it turns two very runny ingredients into one super creamy paste. I am still amazed after so many years. Add a tablespoon of full fat yogurt and a pinch of salt, then stir this in. One thing to note here, by the way, the amount of tahini required to make musabaha is so much less than what you'd need for hummus, like at least two to three times less, which actually makes musabaha a more light and calorie conscious choice. By now, your chickpea water should have reduced down enough, and the next step is to strain the chickpeas over your mixing bowl, because we need that liquid. Now we'll be adding about half of the chickpeas to the now very liquidy bowl. Mix everything together until it's well combined, and at this point, yes, I know, it might look way too runny, but do not worry. Using a spoon or firm spatula, smash the chickpeas against the sides of the bowl. This step can even be done with an immersion blender, but I'm just too lazy for that. If you want it thicker, you can use more chickpeas or reduce the chickpea liquid further in the step before. Now, once you get to your desired texture, add almost all of the remaining chickpeas, which you wanna keep whole for a bit of textural variety, but, but do reserve some of them, like two to three tablespoons. And now, believe it or not, guys, we're almost done. Get everything into a serving bowl or deep dish and add the few remaining chickpeas on top. That's just for presentation. If you like to keep things classic, you could simply sprinkle those with a little bit of chopped parsley, which is what the boys over at Big Basha do. But since you made those two delicious sauces, I think we should use them. Just add a few dollops of our sweet harissa sauce, as well as some of our habibi churi. <laughs> if you're feeling extra extra, you can add some crumbled feta, toasted pine nuts, and a drizzle of olive oil on top. And guys, please trust me on this one. The combo of textures and flavors with bursts of freshness, spiciness, and saltiness is simply incredible here. And it's not just me saying that. After his hard camera work, AP also approved of this very much. I hope this inspires you guys to try making musabaha next time you have a can of chickpeas around and don't really know what to do with them. Thank you guys for watching and by the way, I know some of you were upset last week after I came back from a longer break with a fully sponsored video. I understand your frustration. That definitely wasn't ideal, I apologize. Um, if you're still here watching, thank you. That means a lot. I am not taking this for granted. I hope I can make up for the somewhat clumsy return with a few very exciting pieces of content I have coming up in the next few weeks and months. But with all of that said, have a great one and I'm gonna see you in the next video.